I'm Alyssa from Jarris Custom Clothing, and this is a demonstration about how to sew a French horn bell cover. I am both a sewist and a band director. I am not a medical professional. I cannot attest to the efficacy of these safety measures, but this is my best interpretation of the research we have. This bell cover allows the player to put their hand inside the bell and provides two layers of fabric and one layer of filter material. And looking at this finished product, you're going to end up with something sort of donut shaped and it has a small elastic inner circle and a large elastic outer circle with a single layer of filter sandwiched between two outer layers of material. To start with, you're going to cut a rectangle out of your filter material. I have purchased filter material from the internet. Um, it's advertised as a non-woven polypropylene. It's the same kind of material you might sew into an ordinary face mask. Um, it looks very much like non-fusible interfacing and certainly I think you could use that instead. This is seven and a half inches by 40 inches wide. Next out of your exterior material, probably an, a woven cotton or a quilting cotton. In my demonstration, I actually used an old bed sheet. Uh, you're going to cut a, a rectangle of 15 inches by 40 inches. You most certainly could attach multiple pieces of fabric together as long as it ends up in these dimensions when you're finished. Your fil filter rectangle is the same length but half the height of your exterior rectangle. So you're going to put that filter rectangle on the inside, the wrong side of your exterior material, and you're gonna stitch that in place so it does not move around. You can use a straight stitch or a zigzag. The next step is to fold the rectangle in half with the right sides together, matching the short edges, and then stitch along that short edge. You can use a half inch seam allowance or you could serge it like I did in this picture. If you are using a conventional machine, go ahead and press that seam open flat. Next, we're gonna do the wrist elastic. So you can stitch uh, seven and a half inches of elastic in a circle. I would say a quarter inch or three eighths width elastic would be perfect. Overlap that a quarter inch. Make sure you do it really tight so it's not going anywhere. Alternatively, you can use an elastic hair tie. I'm using that in this picture. Then you're going to put the elastic over the tube that you've already sewn as though it's kind of wearing a belt in the middle. So now you're going to turn this right side out. Flip the top of the tube over the lower part of the tube. Then you're sandwiching the filter piece in the inside, the elastic on the inside, and the wrong sides of your exterior material facing together. Align those outside circumferences and pin in place to this kind of mushroom shape. If you have a serger, just serge around the outside. If you don't, fold in a quarter inch towards the wrong side of the fabric pin it and then stitch it all the way around this outer circumference. The next step is elastic. For my horn bells, they are 13 inches in diameter. And if you have a slightly different size horn bell, you may have to change the elastic adjustments ever so slightly. For my horn bells, 30 inches of elastic was just right. And my elastic stretches about 100%. So two inches of elastic stretches to four inches of elastic. So test this out and see what works for you. You're going to anchor the end of that 30 inches of elastic to one spot on the outside circumference of your circle. And then you're going to stretch and pull it as you zigzag sew it right along that outer edge. What that means is that when you let it go, it will gather by itself. If you're using too thick of a material and it doesn't gather, you could accomplish something similar by creating a casing on this outside circumference. Make sure that when you get back all the way around that you really firmly go backstitch over the edges to make sure they don't come apart. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there.